Hello everyone, today in series of Doc Texas KOL interview, we have with us Dr. Sabir Mohammed, who is specialized in asthma treatment, presently practicing in Bikaner. So hello sir, welcome hello. to Doc Texas KOL hello. interview session. Hello. So uh, thank you Dr. Mohammed, for this interview and in today's uh, session we are going to discuss household air pollution and damage to human lungs. So sir, I would like to ask you a few questions on this topic. So, uh, how does indoor air pollution affect health? Uh, before that, I like to uh, convey to you the magnitude of the uh, problem of this uh, air pollution. Environmental pollution costs about 9 million dollars deaths worldwide. Okay. And it is equivalent three times more than combined malaria, AIDS and this um, uh, viral disease. Now, this much of the toll of deaths are occurring because of environmental pollution and air pollution are sharing 8 million deaths out of this and household air pollution shares 4.3 million deaths per year globally uh, causing various diseases so it's a big problem and unfortunately it's not being discussed and not being talked a lot about it we talk a lot about heart disease or blood pressure and lung disease but we hardly talk about this type of the causative agent for the disease. Okay. In your opinion, sir, what are the major sources of indoor pollution? Okay. Environmental pollution, whether it is indoor or outdoor, in the air, it occurs because of the interaction of the components of the environment. We all are component of all everything around us. We are all component of the environment. We are just in the environment according to our needs. Uh, we act and react according to our needs. These action and reaction they produces uh, some products in the form of the organic, inorganic chemicals, uh, vapors, and fumes and all the things. So these product of uh, interaction of the component of the environment they cause air pollution. Now in the home we have got many such products, okay. many such things. An important one is the fuel we are, which are using for cooking and heating the home and uh, in 50 percent of the uh, world population they are using solid fuel that is the biomass fuel plus the coal and biomass fuel is uh, whatever comes from the living or recently living plants and animals say wood and this mm, grass and uh, agriculture waste cow dung buffalo dung all these are being used. We are very familiar with this because our uh, local rural folk, they are using all, still they are using all these fuels for cooking fuel and heating their homes. Now, they emit some poisonous gases and particles. Among them, important are the carbon monoxide, ozone, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, and particulate matters. That is small particulates of uh, different organic and inorganic components. They are of the size of uh, about 10 micrometer. The particles below 10 micrometers, say 2.5 or less than 2.5, they can be inhaled and go to the lung. And finer particles, that is less than 2.5 micrometer, they can cross the lung borders, alveoli, and go to the bloodstream and go to the blood vessels, they go to the liver and the organs damaging them. That's why uh, these patients, these persons who are exposed to this type of pollution, they suffer from cardiac heart disease, they suffer from the uh, stroke, brain paralysis and all the things, and uh, they suffer from many of the respiratory diseases. Our lung diseases are major diseases because we are inhaling about 10,000 liters of the air from this polluted environment. 10,000 liters of the air we are inhaling per day. And so we are inhaling 10,000 liters of the environment around us, which is polluted, non-polluted, or less polluted. So all these pollutants are going to our lung, and they are damaging. They are directly they are causing irritation, inflammation, and they are suppressing the protective mechanisms of our lung. So the lungs are 
more vulnerable to infection, especially the children and women. They are more vulnerable to the uh, degenerative uh, interstitial, uh, like the interstitial lung disease, to some extent to tuberculosis. COPD is a disease with a major effect amongst our womanhood. Most of the COVID patients are because of tobacco smoking. But more than 15% are among non-smokers, especially Indian women from rural households. They are not smoking, but they are having COPD. That is because of burning of biomass fuel, which I have mentioned. Yeah. So there is a big problem in our country. We have to prevent it. We have to provide them a clean fluid, uh, fuel for prevention of this. Now, uh, another lung disease are the asthma and bronchitis. They are common and persons who are using coal, uh, they are more vulnerable to develop lung cancer also. The studies in our country also, wood, wood, burning wood that uh, smoke can also give rise to some extent lung cancer. Okay, doctor. So, what are the comorbidities associated with household air pollution? It's affecting the lung, the COPD, causing COPD. COPD can cause many systemic ailments like cardiovascular disorder. They are quite common among COPD patients. They have got, they can have renal disease also, they can have bone diseases, muscle wasting. Then if, if the patient has asthma, then their working capacity is decreased in the patient. They have to take treatment for long. And uh, if these people develop, unfortunately, cancer, then uh, there's a big problem for management, for the family, a big burden on the family and the society. So, the, the disease itself are harmful as well as their consequences are also very dangerous. According to you, what is the major impact of household air pollution on lungs? A uh, major impact is COPD among women and respiratory infections among young children, young children in the form of pneumonia and respiratory infection, lower respiratory infection. These are the major impact. Uh, we have got a specific uh, documentation for these diseases. So they are definitely occurring. And COPD in women is a big problem for our country to tackle. So, sir, can you brief about the management strategies that can be adopted for the treatment of damaged human lungs? Oh, here we should talk of the prevention, not management. Management is a big thing, you know, that cannot be just discussed in such a small time and that is more technical. Prevention is, basic thing is, provide clean fuel to the massage. Conversion from biomass fuel to the safe uh, fuel like the LPG and electricity. It is being done in our country. About 90% uh, of rural folk are still using the biomass. And uh, only one third, one third, uh, two third are using clean fuel in urban cities. And 25% of total Indian, Indian population is using wood as a fuel, you know. So we have to shift all this population to the clean fuel LPG is the commerce available clean fuel in our country. Our government is trying at all levels to do it, but many social organizations, NGOs, and we have to increase uh, the literacy of the patient persons to increase awareness among the doctors, to the gen general population, to the rulers, to the bureaucrats for the hazards of this uh, domestic fuel, combustion of domestic fuel, so that preventive measures can be taken. It's a big issue. Needs a lot of money for doing all these things. Okay. So, sir, any futuristic strategies that you want to discuss with us? There are two things. No. One thing is uh, we need more research in this area. It is yet not very much touched by the uh, researcher in medical profession. Research in how lungs are damaged, what is the impact on genetic impact of the, of the damage, how the aging of the lung is affected by the exposure of the uh, biomass fuel burning, fuel burning, the household air pollution, and how the lungs uh, are reacting to this uh, HAP and how we can prevent these research are required. Okay. So, thank you, sir, being with us over here. And okay. thanks for all the knowledge sharing. We'll see more in future coming okay. from you. 
Thank you, sir, for being with us. Thank you.